This is my video blog for uh, IER 190. So I'm going to be talking about um, some videos and articles that I found that were related to uh, FRAT's uh, lecture in class about how patents can be used um, as a business tool and <clears throat> how a comprehensive IP por portfolio can be used um, as uh, a beneficial tool um, in a business type of environment. So um, to start out with, uh, just kind of one of the videos that I found was just kind of a very brief w uh, way to use patents in business, but I kind of recapped what a patent is and uh, reinforced the idea that a patent is really a statutory right to stop others from making, using, or selling an in invention. Um, it is an exclusionary right, and that's also what Efrat talked about in lecture, but it's exclusionary meaning it prevents others from um, commercially benefiting from your invention. So it, it really is something that excludes others from using what you want to. Um, why and when to patent? So patent is kind of equals idea plus an execution. Um, you want to file for a patent before you actually launch. And um, so that was kind of my, my first video. The second video was about patent strategies for emerging companies. And also it was about um, IP and building your IP strategy. So in this video, <coughs> um, one thing that uh, the, the founder, so it was actually done by a CEO of, uh, uh, I believe it was Equinox. And he said, uh, basically, IP strategy is a support vehicle for your business plan. So it, it really kind of goes hand in hand with that. Um, a recent study found that over 50% of patent lawsuit defendants have annual revenue of less than $10 million. So it is clear that um, uh, even as a small company and a, a startup, a patent can be crucial. Um, the, the next video also kind of talks about um, when to file for a patent and what, what products you should patent and what products you shouldn't. So um, a provisional application for a patent can cost companies up to $5,000. Um, and uh, <clears throat> so when does the patent application have to be on file? Uh, there has to be a patent application on file after one of these triggering events. One, um, a public disclosure. Two, a, commercial, a commercialization. Or three, um, a public use. So if one of those three triggering events happens, you have to have a patent application on file. Um, and then lastly, what products are beneficial to patent and what aren't? So um, in this in this video, there was an inventor who was talking to kind of a, uh, a person who was part of the USPTO. And the inventor had two sort of products. One was um, she had completed the development of an interactive game for uh, um, her, her company, which was basically teaching uh, people how to, or teaching kids uh, math through interactive games. And the other product she had was a 3D printer to print prizes for those winners. So which did she patent and why? She patented the game, or I'm sorry, she was advised to not patent the game because um, it may take up to five years to actually have that patent granted just due to the, uh, the backlog in the, in the USPTO, which was also talked about Efrat, by Efrat. Um, and so because this technological landscape is changing so fast, her game may be out, outdated in um, five years down the road. So a patent w wouldn't really be uh, a beneficial thing for her interactive game. But she should patent the 3D printer because it is likely that a, a lot of companies outside uh, her industry would be very interested in that technology. And that's something she could actually license n to them in order to receive some sort of royalties for that or something like, like that. So... The last article I looked at was called uh, IP Strategies for Changing Times. So this basically just talked about um, kind of the erosion of our patent system and how uh, it's been really changing a lot recently. Um, there was a case that um, it kind of all culminated at. It was called Ultra Miracle v. v Hulu. And in this case, um, the court basically, at, well, at the end of it, uh, the court set the stage for the general eradication of software patents. Um, so this is kind of the equivalent of the Fed coming out and saying that the $1 bill will no longer be accepted. So um, there's really been um, a lot of turns and twists in the current patent system. And um, then this article went on to talk about how IP is the cornerstone of business success. And one really interesting quote I saw in this and I thought about was, uh, innovation without protection is philanthropy. And I think this is very true. Um, even if so, if you have a really good product, but you can't patent that or protect that in any way, then it really means nothing um, in terms of your business and your revenue. So that was really interesting. Um, 
they also talked about some common mistakes in IP strategies, and uh, one was filing for invalid patents. So and companies will oftentimes spend up to $25,000, if not more, to file for a patent that ends up being totally invalid. Um, U.S. patents currently are being invalidated at a rate of 70 to 80%, so very, very uh, high. Um, so then what do I kind of think about all this? I think the most important part is that um, having an innovative, attractive product um, as a business is just as important as having a comprehensive IP or patent port portfolio system. And that's kind of my big takeaway from this is that um, if you're going to build those very attractive, highly demanded products, you also have to have the um, appropriate IP portfolio to accompany that. And I'm not saying everything has to be patented as proved by the examples earlier, but um, you have to look at what you need to patent on and what products you need to have an exclusionary right on and um, go about it that way. But the key is to have... Um, make a conscious action to have um, or make a conscious decision to have an actual IP strategy before you start your own business um, because that's really important to your future success. So thank you for watching and go Bears.